Ahead tonight, we have the latest on the Bahamar saga. We take a closer look at the U.S. Cuba ties. And bail for an accused woman in a high-profile murder case. The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report, starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. The Bahama bankruptcy case continues to make national headlines as the Attorney General is requesting a summons hearing next week. Good evening, everyone. I'm Charisma Robinson. And good Tuesday evening, Bahamas. I'm Altaviz Munnings. Next week, Friday, July 1st, is when a hearing of the summons for the appointment of a provisional liquidator will be held in the Supreme Court as requested by Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Senator the Honorable Allison Maynard Gibson. An announcement is also expected to be made in the Supreme Court at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning regarding the recognition for Bahamas Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing. In a press release issued last night, the government's objective remains first and foremost to ensure the opening of Bahamar under private ownership and operation. The release says the role of the provisional liquidator would be to oversee the restructuring and opening of Bahamar under the supervision of the court should the parties be unable to negotiate an agreement to complete and open Bahamar. The government maintains that the peti petition for the winding up of Bahamar and the summons of a provisional liquidator is a precautionary measure designed to protect Bahamians in the event that no agreement can be reached out of court. Should the parties arrive at an impasse, restructuring of Bahamar must take place under the supervision of a Bahamian court. The government adds that the independent provisional liquidator will be lawfully bound to have regard to the best interests of the Bahamian people, Bahamian contractors, creditors, Bahamar employees, and investors in Bahamar. Well, I was away and Justice Ian Winder is set to make a decision on whether Bahamar will get its wish to have its bankruptcy application approved so that it can move forward. Jimmy Nuswain was in court on Monday afternoon and fills us in on the objections raised. A decision is likely in the Bahama court matter as early as this week. Justice Ian Winder said Wednesday at 10 a.m. as a time when he will make his decision. Bahama is seeking to have its bankruptcy application given the green light for approval. During the afternoon session, attorney for the China XM Bank Queen's counsel Brian Sims continued to hammer out his reasons why the decision should not be allowed to proceed. He said there are no insolvency proceedings here in the Bahamas and it cannot be invented by the court. Sims said Bahama started off on the wrong foot, ended up with a misconceived and unprecedented application which he insisted may makes no sense and cannot stand. He further argued that Bahamas application was seeking an injunction against the bank which it owes $2.45 billion in a move to prevent the bank from exercising its loan security rights. Minister of State for Legal Affairs Damien Gomez, who appears on behalf of the government, said the only court that can dissolve a company incorporated in the Bahamas is the Supreme Court. By all indications, Gomez says it appeared as if Bahama was not happy with the Bahamas' insolvency laws, so it filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in Delaware. The application is misconceived, he said, in seeking recognition of foreign proceedings as primary insolvency proceedings when the Delaware order only provides for recognition of a foreign representative. Cable Bahamas' representative, Leslie Mortimer, drew reference to the fact that the company has to continue to provide monthly services and equipment to Bahama that exceeds $90,000 per month, while he says the order by the U.S. court only makes provisions for the debt in possession responsible to pay $75,000. He pointed out that an adjustment can be made. Monomo added that the company feels disadvantaged by the decision of the U.S. court and asked for the application to be dismissed. Representative for the China Construction America, Sean Mori, in his submissions called it contrary and perverse to public policy for the court to recognize foreign proceedings as opposed to a foreign representative. He too suggested the application was ill-conceived. Mori said it would not be the larger creditor 
others that feel it, but insisted that those that are owed 2000 are who would feel it the most. Maury said Bahama's decision to file in Delaware was unjustified and calculated. Bahama Council Roy Sweeting maintained his reasons why the application should be approved, noting that there would be a level of control asserted if approved. However, if the application was rejected, he said the company would have to let the chips fall where they may. A decision is expected at 10 a.m. Wednesday by Justice Winder. Chimenea Swain, Sadness Network News. Well, concern continues to mount from various sectors on the fate of the multi-billion dollar Bahama project it's still, as it's still unknown. Apart from its world-class resort and casino, developers also create a, a unique feature, a condo hotel component called the Bahama Residences. In this report, Siaska Adderley spoke with a real estate expert on the impact the Bahama saga could have on the real estate sector. Once opened, each hotel partner in the Bahama development is expected to have a residence component ranging from one to three bedrooms. The question remains, how will this saga impact the country's real estate sector that's already struggling with sluggish sales? On Monday, President of the Bahamas Real Estate Association, Carla Sweeting, outlined a number of concerns, saying the completion and opening of Bahama is crucial to the country's economy. The most immediate impact if Bahamar fails is going to be the amount of rental inventory that's going to flood the market because at the moment they do occupy a great deal of rentals. From a sales point of view, um, we have difficulty with the average Bahamian qualifying for mortgages now. Um, will the banks take a look at this as being a, a huge economic um, issue. Since the launch of each resident's product, quite a lot of interest has been garnered, with prospective buyers already putting down deposits. However, Sweeting believes the level of uncertainty surrounding Bahamar's opening could affect investor confidence in the Bahamas. For those individuals who have um, made deposits on these units, I'm sure they are just as anxious as we all are for this to, to, to open and, and become a reality because at the end of the day, the product is quite nice and very attractive. As a result of the ongoing legal wranglings, Bria's president says that even if Bahamar is up and running anytime soon, the residence aspect of the project will still likely experience some fallout. As with anything that, that comes on the market and then has to be shelved for any reason, you're going to have a little bit of hesitation from buyers. But I think at the end of the day, when um, people come and see what a beautiful um, resort it's going to be, they will want to be a part of it and take advantage of, of what they have to offer. At the end of the day, Sweeting is hoping that all concerned parties are able to come to a solution so that the Bahamian Riviera can be opened soon. C.S. Gatterly, ZNS Network News. This portion of the news is brought to you by the new Shell and Letter, designed for extra miles.